Hello and welcome to Python Fundamentals. In this course, we learn the underpinning Python programming skills, preparing for our journey towards mastering the Django framework and the Python programming language. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials. You can find the link to the whole playlist in the video description. This tutorial is from our Python Programming Fundamentals for Django Developers course, which you can find and purchase on Udemy. You will find all the latest and updated tutorials, as well as resources and assessments to help accelerate your learning of the subject. The link to the course, which will always provide the best price, can be found in the video description. So having now developed our form and now placed it onto our template, we now need to develop the mechanics, the workflow, to actually store that data from the user's input over to our Django database. So before we can start to think about actually inserting data into the database, we need to have a better idea of what exactly is happening so that we can then develop our application accordingly. So what we have here is a type of flowchart, if you like. I've just greatly, quickly mocked this up for us to better understand what's happening here before we start building. So here up the top, we have the user. They navigate to our web page, they access our form, they type in some data into the form, into the inputs, and then they press send. That data is sent via HTTP post request. So the first thing that we need to do in our view is we need to check whether the user has accessed our page via a HTTP POST request or not. So if the user were to navigate to our page, then we know what happens. They are shown the, the template and the form. If they were to send a request from that URL as a POST request, then we want to perform a different action. So here, we first of all check when the user accesses the page or sends data. First of all, we check to see whether it is a HTTP POST request or whether they've sent to us a HTTP GET request. If they have sent us a POST request, we'll do something different. If they haven't sent us a POST request but want to access the page, then we go along here to the NO and then we return the template and form. Okay, so let's imagine the user has gone to our web page they have now accessed our form and entered some data and pressed send. Now what they've done is they've sent a HTTP POST request. So now instead of no, the answer is yes. So we can now perform some additional tasks. Now let's go back to the if statement. Remember the if statement is essentially providing us a way to compare. So we can gather this information here. We can get the request information from the user and we can compare it. And what we can do here is we can validate whether it is post or not. If it isn't post, we're going to send them the template and form back. If it does return true, i.e. we do match a post request, then we're now going to then go ahead and validate the data. So here what we have is an if statement. So let's assume the user has sent the data to this view. Let's go ahead now and perform additional actions. So the first thing that we need to do on this data is we need to validate this data. Django does this automatically for us. It's going to check to make sure that the user has typed in the correct data types in order for us to actually save that data correctly in our database. Now, because we're using model form, because we're utilizing the model to generate our form, everything is done automatically for us here. It knows what data types and, for example, the maximum amount of characters that can be saved, for example, in a, in a field if we've, if we've defined that. So it can validate the data that the user's typed in. So here we have another decision. Is the data valid, yes or no? So here we have another if statement. If the data is valid, then we want to save that data to the database. And then potentially we want to also redirect the user maybe to another page. In this case, it's going to be the home page. Now, if that data isn't valid, potentially we need to make some sort of code or generate code, which is going to then tell the user that they have incorrectly inserted the wrong data into the form. 
Now, using a framework such as Django, it provides a lot for us already. So there's a few things here that we don't necessarily need to concentrate on. And the depth of this tutorial, we're not going to necessarily focus on. So for example, the, the warnings, what we will find is that it does generate a form for us, which will perform some validation before we actually send or before the user sends the data to Django. So we won't concentrate on that, but let's just try and generate this basic workflow utilizing some if statements. So let's go back into, let's close all this up. Let's go back into our views here. Right. So first of all, then let's just capture. So remember what's happening here in this request. We inspected this quest request at the start of the course. We found that it had uh, some additional information, which was very useful. So let's print it out again. So we're just going to print request. So let's go over to our web page and we're just going to refresh this page. Let's go back and notice here, this information is being printed and we can see that that was a get request. So notice that when we go to the web page, like I explained, we send a HTTP request from our browser to the, the server. And you can see that we've captured that utilizing print from the request. So that was get. So let's now send a post. So let's add some data here, press OK. OK, let's not worry about that. But you can now see, um, nope, we can't see that. OK, so let's deal with this. Oh, we can see there was a, there was a post that was from the server. But let's just uh, focus in on this first. OK, so in order for us to actually securely send data back to the server, we are going to need to include a CSRF token within our form. So this is additional information that's going to be sent back from our form to essentially tell Django that yes, this form has been generated by our Django application and the data from that form is going to be allowed to be processed. So let's deal with this issue first. Let's go into forms here. Oh no, sorry, into our template. Let's add new template. And we're just going to need to add the, we're going to need to add the CSRF token right here, right? So let's add this in. CSRF to token, there we go. So although I have summarized CSRF, it is an important factor, which is well worth just reading through, maybe just a Django documentation. There's a few paragraphs here. It'd be well worth spending a little bit of time on familiarizing yourself with this. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to um, go into too much detail here, but it is worth understanding. And generally, Django will inform us when we've forgotten to utilize CSRF, like you just saw there. So let's go back in and refresh this page. You can see it would try and send again. So let's just go back, refresh. Let's type this information in again, press OK. And that time it looks like we're all OK. So you can see now, in our request here, we now have a post request. Now notice whether it's get or post, the actual URL is the same. So we need to capture this information now utilizing an if statement. And like we saw in our diagram here, uh, we need to first of all decide whether the user has sent a get. So now we need to make an if statement, which will capture check to see if the request is a HTTP post or get request. So in comes our if statement, right? So if, let's start with the if, right? So if, if what? So the resource we're trying to check against is in request. So if request, inside request, we have um, a method. Okay, so inside of this request information, we have the method resource. Inside of here, that then is storing whether it's a get or a post request. So if it's a post request, we're going to do something different here. Okay, so if we use the colon at the end here, remember? Okay, so we now have our if statement in place. Now, if it is a post request, we're going to obviously try and save the data that the user has sent. But if it isn't, we need to do something else. So let's run our else here. So let's put a pass here for now, just a temporary piece of code. Let's run our else. 
So if the request isn't post, then it's going to be get. So we don't need to check for, for both explicitly. We can make the assumption if it's not a post, it's going to be a get request. So what do we want to do if it's a get request? We want to send or give the customer the form. So let's go ahead and indent this. We're going to then set up the form so the user can access the form. Okay, so there we go. So that's our initial start. If it's a post request, we're going to do this, which we haven't defined yet. If it's not a post request, then we're going to set up the form and send the form back to the user. Now, what we can do is just tab that across. Okay, it's a little bit more kind of explicit now. It's either post or not. So we return back the template and form set. Okay, so if we go back into our code, we shouldn't have broken our code at all. So let's just refresh our page. Apologies, let's just uh, refresh our page. There we go, so that's us landing on the page. Now, obviously at the moment, you like you saw the error there. If we do try to type something again, if we capture the post, you can see that we have a value error here. Nothing is returned. We're not returning anything back. So there's no template or anything else that we're returning here. So we need to deal with this differently now. So now we need to, now we've captured this via an if statement. Let's go ahead now and validate the data. So Django provides us the tools to validate the data. So there's not too much we need to do here. Back in our code, remember this is going to be within the if true component here of our if statement. So if the request method is post, then we need to do something. So we need to first of all, grab the information. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's create this variable here called form set equals, and then we're going to grab the customer form, customer, customer form. And then essentially we're going to take the data from the request because the user has sent the data from the form in the request. So we're going to grab that data. Okay. So essentially we're populating a form uh, with the data that the user sent. So now we have essentially the, the form and the data ready to then be saved into the database. Right. So let's go ahead and say if, so here we have a, a nested if, if form set referring to the data um, that we've captured from the user, if the form set, and then we use a function in Django called is valid. So that's going to run validation on our data. Okay. So if the data is valid, then what do we want to do? Well, going back to our code here, we want to save the data into the database. So let's give that a go. So form set dot save. Okay. So at this point, we've now saved the data to the database. Now, if we were successful at doing that, we want to then return the user back to somewhere. And if we go back here, we want to return them, return them back to the home page. So here, what we're going to do then is we're bringing a resource here so we can do that. That's from Django. Actually, we've got it up here from Django HTTP. Let's bring in the HTTP response uh, redirect. Okay. So with that in place, let's go ahead now and we're going to save the data and then we're going to go ahead and return HTTP response. And then we define the, the resource that we want them to access, which is going to be the home page. Okay. So let's navigate back to our add new, add new page. There we go. Right. Let's give this a go. So, uh, hello, age 10, mobile 10, press okay. Okay. So what we've done now is we've looks like we've successfully added data to our database. It's been validated. It looks like it's saved and we have been redirected as our code has been developed to redirect the user back to the home page. Now it does look here that we've actually successfully done that because the data is right here at the bottom. Remember this page is essentially looping through all the data in our database table and outputting it here to the home page. So let's go back to our logic here. Hopefully you can start to see maybe the importance of, first of all, actually trying to describe 
doesn't have to be a flow control or flow diagram. If you can't describe what it is that you're trying to do, then it's unlikely that you'll be able to actually then create it using code. So a flow diagram such as this is a really useful tool to help you work out the logic and the requirements of your code before you then start building. Because here clearly it helps, it's helping us to define what features need to be included. And also it helps us define what happens in certain situations and thus then allowing us to think about what needs to be developed in order to support that. Now, potentially there is a little bit more work that needs to be done here. Take for example, if our form set, for example, isn't valid, what would happen next? Well, we haven't actually defined that for example here. So it's hard to say exactly what would happen at this point. Potentially there would be an error if the form set were to return false. So it can be very useful to develop these type of drawings because in actual fact, we have specified the yes and the no, the true and the false outcome of this if statement here, but obviously we've yet to develop this. So the message is clear here. Do try and plan. Think about developing the logic of your application, the workflow of your application, and that may help you understand what it is that you need to develop in your code. And like I said before, actually developing in the code can be the easiest thing. If you can articulate a solution, if you can draw the solution, then you're three quarters of the way there. Although I have mentioned previously about, think of these tools that we've been learning, if statements and for loops as solutions to problems. So think about the problems that they solve. Although that's the case, a lot of the work that you do as a developer a lot of the skills that you develop will come through experience. So the best way to get experience is to start developing and start actually writing code, of course. I would also argue that having a mindset to develop is also important. Again, like I say, I'm kind of contradicting myself here, but I do value the importance of thinking and drawing and planning for applications. Because once you start thinking more logically, more like how you're going to program, it obviously does make it a lot easier for you to develop the solutions and also develop the program and make more effective, more performant applications. So this is something I completely forgot actually before I had to re-record this. So now we have added a form and we've added some data. Uh, so let's just finish this off. So we'll present this information in a little bit more streamlined format so that we can see the data um, or the different rows of the table a little bit clearer. So let's go back into the code. Let's go into our index page here. What we're going to do here is let's just make an unordered list. So we're going to make a list here. If you're not familiar to HTML, UL unordered list. So let's go ahead and build some tags here to create this unordered list. I'll just tab that across. Um, oh, actually it needs to be before the end, of course. Okay, right, so we've got this list here. So let's turn these P's into LI for list items in this list. Okay, so do a little bit of that. Let's go back into here and press refresh. And you can now see the differentiation between the different uh, rows in our table. So let's go back into add, was it user add or user? I can't remember. Okay, add new, sorry. Right, so let's go to add new. Let's add a new name, of course, test age mobile, press okay. So clearly it's working okay. Of course, we can go back into the admin. So slash admin, we can go to our customers. We can also see the data here and we can maybe make some changes. So clearly our form is working. 